I'll just start this one on the Fermi paradox. Are we the only living things in the entire universe? The, the observable out. universe is about 90 billion light years in diameter. There are at least 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 to 1,000 billion stars. Recently, After the last video I posted on the universe, I looked into how exactly they decipher how many stars there are because I thought, well, surely nobody's counted that. And it turns out that they take a rough estimate considering what we know about the Milky Way. The thing is, the amount of stars on the Milky Way varies depending on the source. I've read anywhere from 100 billion to 400 billion stars, at least from the, I think it was three sources I've read. So if anybody has a better idea of how to explain that, feel free to weigh in down below. We've learned that planets are very common too, and there are probably trillions and trillions of habitable planets in the universe, which means there should Seems be like lots lot. of opportunity for life to develop and exist, right? But where is it? Shouldn't the universe be teeming with spaceships? Let's take a step back. Okay, so the Fermi paradox is essentially asking the question of if there's such a high probability, or I'll say likelihood, of the existence of life on other planets, why haven't we seen it yet? Why do we have this lack of conclusive evidence? So hopefully the video gets into that and gives some sort of ideas, because realistically, we don't have any answers. <laughs> Even if there are alien civilizations in other galaxies, there's no way we'll ever know about them. Basically, everything outside of our direct galactic neighborhood, the so-called local group, is pretty much out of our reach forever because of the expansion of the universe. Even if we had really fast spaceships, it would literally take billions of years to reach these places, traveling through the emptiest areas in the universe. So let's focus on the Milky Way. The Milky Way is okay. our home galaxy. It consists of up to 400 billion stars. That's so a he lot says of stars. Counting one per second, it would take you a hundred lifetimes to count them all. There are about 20 billion sun-like stars in the Milky Way, and estimates suggest that a fifth of them have an Earth-sized planet in its habitable zone, the area with conditions that enable life to exist. If only 0.1% of those planets harbored life, there would be one million planets with life in the Milky Way. But wait, there's more. Mm. The Milky Way is about 13 billion years old. In the beginning, it would not have been a good place for life because things exploded a lot. But after one to two billion years, the first habitable planets were born. Earth is only four billion years old, so there have probably been trillions of chances for life to develop on other planets in the past. If only a single one of them had developed into a space-traveling super-civilization, we would have noticed by now. Or would what we? would such a civilization look like? There are three categories. Type 1, 2, and a 3. A Type 1 civilization would be able to access the whole energy available on its planet. In case you're wondering, we're currently around 0.73 on the scale, and we should reach Type 1 sometime in the next couple of hundred years. Type 2 would be a civilization capable of harnessing all of the energy of its home star. This would require some serious science fiction, but it is doable in principle. Concepts like the Dyson Sphere, a giant complex surrounding the sun, would be conceivable. Type 3 is a civilization that basically controls its whole galaxy and its energy. An alien race this advanced would probably be godlike to us. But why should we be able to see such an alien civilization in the first place? If we were to build generation spaceships that could sustain a population for around 1,000 years, we could colonize the whole galaxy in 2 million years. Sounds like a long time, but remember, yeah. the Milky Way is huge. So if it takes a couple of million years to colonize the entire galaxy, and there are possibly millions, if not billions, of planets that sustain life in the Milky Way, and these other life forms have had considerably more time than we've had, then... Where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox, and nobody has an answer to it. But we do have some ideas. Let's talk okay. about filters. A filter in this context represents a barrier that is really hard for life to overcome. They come in various degrees of scary. One, there are great filters, and we have passed them. Maybe it is way harder for complex life to develop than we think, 
The process allowing life to begin hasn't yet been completely figured out and the conditions required may be really complicated. Maybe in the past, the universe was way more hostile and only recently have things cooled down to make complex life possible. This would also mean that we may be unique or at least one of the first, if not the first, civilization in the entire universe. That's a possibility. Two, there are great filters and they are ahead of us. This one would be really, really bad. Maybe life on our level exists everywhere Climate in the universe, change. but it gets destroyed when it reaches a certain point, a point Radio that lies there. ahead of us. For example, awesome future technology exists, but when activated, it destroys the planet. The last words of every advanced civilization would be, this new device will solve all of our problems once I push this button. If this is true, then we are closer to the end than the beginning of human existence. Or maybe there is an ancient Type 3 civilization that monitors the universe, and once the civilization is advanced enough, it gets eliminated in an instant. Not. Maybe there is something out there that it would be better not to discover. There is no way for us to know. One final thought, maybe we're alone. Right now, we have no evidence that there's any life besides us. Nothing. The universe appears to be empty and dead. No one sending us messages, no one answering our calls. We may be completely alone, trapped on a tiny moist mud ball in an eternal universe. Does that thought scare you? If it does, you're having the correct emotional reaction. If we let life on this planet die, perhaps there will be no life left in the universe. Life will be gone maybe forever. If this is the case, we just have to venture to the stars and become the first Type 3 civilization to keep the delicate flame of life existing and to spread it until the universe breathes its final breath and vanishes into oblivion. The universe is too beautiful not to be experienced by someone. Or maybe we'll never know. This one didn't give me as much of an existential crisis as I'd hoped. Leave your thoughts on his final question down below, though. Is it scarier if we're the only life forms or if there are life forms on other planets? Also, just a side note, until I started posting videos on space on the channel, I wasn't aware of how many people don't believe in it, which I think is fascinating. Maybe you think we're in a simulation or we're in the Truman Show or nothing exists outside of Earth. I don't know. But if you're one of those people, feel free to explain your stance down below. Personally, I think that there is a strong possibility that there's life forms on other planets, just numerically, but it's also speculative. And that is, of course, based on the assumption that the universe is how we believe it to be. And while I do agree for the most part with those who think that there is some sort of arrogance at play when considering that we're the only life forms, I don't discount the possibility that we're the first. That being said, I don't know. It is still very much a debate. Someone interesting to read on the subject is Brian Cox, the physicist, not the actor from Succession, who gets into how he thinks it's probable that we're the only life forms in our galaxy. But I haven't read him say anything about being the only life forms in the universe. Now, he does have a lot of books, and I haven't read many of them. There is one called The Planets that I'll link down below for you. I think this one is one of his more entry-level books. The other ones get really deep into quantum theory, which sometimes is just right over my head. Well, quantum theory and quantum physics. Anyway, there's a part two to this video. Let's just get into that right now. So give me a second. We'll start up with part two. A few moments later. Okay, Fermi Paradox, part two, solutions and ideas. There are probably 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth in the observable universe. How we did know I that there might that? be trillions of planets, so where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox. If you want to know more about it, watch part one. Here, we look at possible solutions to the Fermi Paradox. So, will we be destroyed, or does a glorious future await us? Hopefully it doesn't have to be either or. Space travel is hard. Although possible, it's an enormous challenge to travel to other stars. Massive amounts of material have to be put into orbit and assembled. A journey of maybe thousands of years needs to be survived by a population big enough to start from scratch. 
and the planet might not be as hospitable as it seemed from afar. It was mm. already extremely hard to set up a spaceship that could survive the trip. An interstellar invasion might be impossible to put off. Also, consider time. The universe is very old. On Earth, there's been life for at least 3.6 billion years. Intelligent human life for about 250,000 years, but Just only for about a century have we had the technology to communicate over great distances. There might have been grand alien empires that stretched across thousands of systems and existed for millions of years, and we might just have missed them. There might be grandiose ruins rotting away on distant worlds. 99% of all species on Earth have died out. It's easy to argue that this will just be being alive is a lottery later. Intelligent life may develop, spread over a few systems, and die off over and over again. But galactic civilizations might never meet. So maybe it's a unifying experience for life in the universe to look at the stars and wonder, where is everyone? But there is no reason to assume aliens are like us or that our logic applies to them. Mm. It might just be that our means of communication are extremely primitive and outdated. Imagine sitting in a house with a Morse code transmitter. You'd keep sending messages, but nobody would when answer. When was Morse code first used? In the 1820s or 1830s? I know the first message was biblical, but I don't remember what it said. If you know, write that down below. And you'd feel pretty lonely. Maybe we're still undetectable for intelligent species and will remain so until we learn to communicate properly. And even if we met aliens, we might be too different to be able to communicate with them in a meaningful way. Imagine the smartest squirrel you can. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to explain our society to it. After all, from the squirrel's perspective, a tree is all that a sophisticated intelligence like itself needs to survive. So, humans cutting down whole forests is madness. But we don't destroy forests because we hate squirrels, we just want the resources. The squirrel's wishes and the squirrel's survival are of no concern to us. Do you really think that it would change your life in any meaningful way if you found out that there were life forms on distant planets? I was just considering that. And I was thinking that, yes, it might give some perspective, but it's something similar to when we were speaking about simulation theory. For me, I don't think that it would make our microcosmic lives any different. We would probably still have to go to work. You'd still have to call your family members every once in a while, if that's what you do. Or you'd still have to eat, right? Things that make you human, you would still, they would still apply. So although I think the knowledge would be interesting or cool, I don't think it would change my life. But I'm just me, so let me know a significant change that it would make in your life if you think there is one. A type 3 civilization in need of resources may treat us in a similar way. Mm. They might just evaporate our oceans to make collecting whatever they need easier. One of the aliens might think for a second, oh, tiny little apes, they build really cute concrete structures. Oh well, now they're dead, before activating warp speed. But if there is a civilization out there that wants to eliminate other species, it's far more likely that it will be motivated by culture rather than by economics. And anyway, it will be more effective to That's automate the process by constructing the perfect weapon a self-replicating space probe made from nanomachines. They operate on a molecular level incredibly fast and deadly with the power to attack and dismantle anything in an instant. You only need to give them four instructions. One, find a planet with life. Two, disassemble everything on this planet into its component parts. Three, use the resources to build new space probes. Four, repeat. A doomsday machine like this could render a galaxy sterile in a few million years. But why would you fly light years to gather resources or commit genocide? The speed of light is actually not very fast. If someone could travel at the speed of light, it would still take 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way once, and you'll probably travel way slower. I'm there might be way more enjoyable things than destroying civilizations and building empires. An interesting concept is the matryoshka brain, a megastructure surrounding a star. A computer of such computing power that an entire species could upload their consciousness and exist in a simulated universe. Potentially, one Not could experience me. an eternity of pure ecstasies without ever being bored or sad. A perfect life. 
If built around a red dwarf, this computer could be powered for up to 10 trillion years. Who would want to conquer the galaxy or make contact? A life without being bored or sad just doesn't seem like an interesting life to me. With other life forms, if this were an option. All these solutions to the Fermi paradox have one problem. We don't know where the borders of technology are. We could be close to the limit or nowhere near it. And super technology awaits us, granting us immortality, transporting us to other galaxies, elevating us to the level of gods. One thing we do have to acknowledge is that we really don't know anything. Humans have spent more than 90% of their existence as hunter-gatherers. 500 years ago, we thought we were the center of the universe. 200 years ago, we stopped using human labor as the main source of energy. 30 years ago, we had apocalyptic weapons pointed at each other because of political disagreements. In the galactic timescale, we are embryos. We've come far, but still have a long way to go. The mindset that we really are the center of the universe is still strong in humans, so it's easy to make arrogant assumptions about life in the universe. But in the end, there's only one way to find out, right? Time? Uh, who knows what conclusions technology will lead us to in the future, hopefully in our lifetimes. But that definitely left me with a lot more questions than answers. I don't have any answers for you, but I think if anybody had a meaningful, conclusive answer, we, the population, scientists, wouldn't still be asking the question. So let me know your opinion down below. I'm liking this channel a lot. I'll link you the original video in the bio as well as the channel, and feel free to recommend any more videos of this ilk. I did recommend one book from Brian Cox, That'll be in the bio as well, but I can't think of any other book. No. So if you have one that you want to recommend to the channel, feel free to do that. I do end up reading a lot of the suggestions, but I also buy the suggestions as well. And it's really growing my library. So thank you for that. And thanks for watching with me. Leave your thoughts on any of this. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>